Hi, my name is Kyle Lyon. I'm a systems architect here at Solutions PT. And in today's episode of Tech Bytes, we're taking a look at one of the newer features in Aviva Insight, which is our cloud-based asset management and data analytics platform. And that feature is asset types. Now, we've been over what assets are in previous episodes, but in case you don't know, assets are a way of sorting your tag data into logical structures. Uh, an asset can be a location, it can be a site or a region, for example. It could be a production line or a department within a building. Or it could be individual pieces of equipment. Here on the screen, I have the start of my hierarchy. A top level asset here with my name, because this is a shared sandbox with some other uh, of my colleagues at Solutions PT. But this could just as easily be your enterprise. I then have an asset a level below for a site based in the UK. With assets, you can create a hierarchy that matches the real world layout of your enterprise and then link tag sets to those to make filtering, correlating and dashboarding your data a lot easier by tying in context. Now with the new asset types, what we can do is we can predefine what data, data types and content a particular asset should have and even automatically generate visualization content, alerts, and analytics models based on this as we add more assets of that type. This drastically speeds up the process of creating a digital twin in the cloud and gives you visibility of assets that maybe don't have all the necessary data that we should expect so that, that can be rectified. So for the purposes of this demonstration, let's say my UK site has three production lines, each with its own mixer. So I'm gonna create an asset type of mixer I'm going to provide it with a description. So to do that, we go to browse and we go to asset types. And we want to create an asset type here by clicking add. So we want a mixer asset type and a simple description of just a mixer in the UK site. Then we're going to hit save and add properties to take me straight into the asset type page. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to keep things simple and just give two properties to it, but you can obviously have as many as makes sense for whatever type of asset you're modeling. So my first property is going to be a level, and it's going to be the current level in the mixer. For the data type, it's going to be an analog, so it's going to be a numerical value. And for a dimension, we're going to give it a dimension of volume. Now, dimensions aren't necessarily required here, uh, but they're used for implicit engineering unit conversions. So for example, with a volume, we can use that in combination with a time dimension data to get a volumetric flow. There's a lot of those calculations sort of built into the uh, Insight engine that you can get a lot of use out of by using dimensions, but we're not gonna cover it specifically in this video. Then our second property is going to be our temperature. That's going to be the current temperature in the mixer. Naturally for our um, dimension, it's going to be temperature. Let me hit save on that. And there we go, that's our asset type, our mixer template created. Now that we've made our asset type, let's go make our first mixer. So to do that, we go to assets and we're gonna make mixer one. So add asset, mixer one. It's part of our UK site, so we're gonna put it in the UK time zone. It's gonna be the mixer on production line one. For the purpose of this, we're going to skip over geolocation for now. For our path, we want it underneath our UK site in our hierarchy. So I can type in UK site here. And then most importantly, we want to assign it the asset type of mixer. Now we save that. Let that create the asset that we've just made. And then if we go back to asset types, go back into our mixer definition under asset instances we can see that mixer one has now been added indicating that it's now been linked to that asset type now if you've got a lot of assets that you've already created previously that you want to sort of bulk assign to an asset type 
you can do that from asset type actions and link assets. This will let you add multiple at the same time instead of going and adding each individual asset to it one by one. But for the purposes of this particular demonstration, that's how we're going to be doing it. Now you'll have noticed we have a warning on our mixer asset type here at the top telling us that we haven't assigned any tags to the properties. We need to map the tags of Mixer 1 to the properties that we defined a Mixer should have. Currently, Mixer 1 doesn't have any tags, so I'm going to use the CSV import feature in our data sources, which is available through administration data sources. And I have a data source here named KLCSV test. So I'm going to provide some data and metadata for a Mixer 1. And I'm going to do that by dragging in a Mixer 1 metadata CSV, which has already been pre-made, and a Mixer 1 data CSV. So the metadata file will establish the tags in Insight, and the data file will provide values to those tags. At the bottom here, you've got, some download, uh, you've got the download sample file button, which will allow you to see some examples of what CSV or JSON formats uh, Insight will accept for doing this. Equally, this could be coming from a live data source like Yaskada. So now we've added those tags in, let's head back to our asset type. Go to mixes and our asset instance. Now there are a few ways to map tags to properties. The first is to go to an asset instance and click on the ellipsis on the right side and hit map tags to properties. Here I can just search for the tags that I want to map to these properties. So we'll remove the filters that have been automatically applied here. And I know that my first one should have mixer one. And there we go, KLCSV test mixer one dot level. That's the tag we're looking for. Do the same for temperature. and hit save. The second method, which we'll cover shortly when we make some more mixes, is for mapping lots of assets at the same time. For example, if you've already made a lot of assets within Insight before the asset types feature came out and you want to get them connected to an asset type really easily. For this, we can go to actions and import tag mappings, where we can provide a CSV file uh, to map those tags on mass. We download this sample file and open it up. We can see the format that we want to follow. We have the asset type that we're caring about here. We have the name of the asset that we are mapping to that type. The path of that asset in our hierarchy. The property name we're wanting to link a tag to. And then finally, the tag name that we're linking. Naturally, it's going to have as many rows as you need it to to match however many assets you're adding. And we can verify that those tags have been correctly mapped by going to the asset tag mappings tab here. And we can see that the level and temperature have successfully been mapped from property to tag name. So now that we have an asset of our mixer type made, let's demonstrate how we can make a piece of content once and then have that automatically created for every asset of this mixer type. So firstly, let's grab the tags from our first mixer, which I can find by just typing in mixer one here. And I know that it's level and temp. We're going to bring these into a piece of content. We'll change the visualization settings here to a line chart or a trend. And that's perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a trend. Now, importantly, I'm going to change this visible to my team, as this makes it so that anyone with the required permissions can view it, which is going to be required for when we want to make these en masse. Once I click my team and I link it to the asset mixer one, you'll see that we now have a new menu appear. It's going to ask us if we want to have all instances of the mixer asset to have this type of chart. We can also see that it will prepend the individual assets name onto this content. So you can see there, in this case, it's going to be mixer one dash trend. When we add more mixes, it'll be mixer two dash trend, mixer three dash trend, and so on. Just an example. 
Now we've just used a single trend here as an example, just for the sake of speed, but the same process applies for any chart type you want. So that can be bar charts, pie graphs, things like that. This also applies for condition-based alerts, any dashboards you create, which bring in multiple pieces of content and guide analytics models. So you can create them once and then roll them out across every asset type that you've got. So we're gonna save this. And then once that's saved, if we go to browse and asset types, and we go back to our mixer, we can see that in our associated items pane, we now have that trend item. So now we've got our asset type defined with a trend that we want to be generated automatically for every instance of it. Let's add two more mixers. Firstly, I'm going to go to browse and assets, and I'm going to create two more mixers exactly the same way as I did with mixer one. I'm going to hit add. This is going to be mixer two. Again, we're still in the UK site, so I'm going to give it the UK time zone. It's going to be the mixer on production line two. Our asset is going to be UK site once more. And again, assign it to the mixer asset type. Hit save. And then we can do the same for mixer three. So I've made mixer three quickly and just cut that part. Now, again, I've got some pre-made CSVs that I have with the metadata for the level and temperature tags and the data for those that I can just drop into my data source here. But remember that these can just as easily be coming from live data sources, again, like SCADA systems, like an OPC UA server, an MQTT broker, various things like that. So let's drop those in. There's our metadata. And there's our data. So now that we've uploaded that data, we're going to map those using the import tag mappings tool in the asset type definition that we just went over before. So I head to browse, asset types, I click mixer. You can see that we've got a warning telling us that we haven't got our complete tag mapped for two properties. So now we're gonna to go to asset type actions, import tag mappings, and I've already made a CSV to map that following the format that we saw from the sample file before. That's confirmed that it's been uploaded successfully. So we're going to hit close. We're going to head to asset tag mappings. And we can see that our mixer 2 has a level and temperature and our mixer 3 also has a level and temperature. Now, if we head back to our asset types, we can see that our synchronization status is OK for mixers. And if we head to mixer, we can see that that warning is now gone. Now, if we go to our asset instances and we click into mixer 2, for example, we can see that under associated content, we now have a mixer 2 dash trend. If I click this, we can see that it's automatically created a trend for us. I've intentionally used a different data set here. So we can show that if we go back to yesterday, this is now mapped to the Mixer 2 set of tags. And we can see that also if we hover over here and check out our tag names for Mixer2.level and Mixer2.temp. The same has been created for Mixer3 as well. And that's been a guide for how to use asset types in Aviva Insight. We created a single asset type for Mixer. We created a single instance of that in Mixer1. We defined a piece of content that we wanted to have every mixer display, which in our case was just a single trend. And then we added two more mixer instances, mixer two and three, to show that that was automatically then created for them. For the sake of video length, I've kept things fairly simple in my examples here, but you can easily follow this process to automatically create tens or hundreds of individual charts, dashboards, condition-based alerts, or analytics models, just by creating them once and using this asset types feature. Now, there are some further examples of powerful ways to use asset types in the help files, particularly on this page here, example scenarios for generating, editing, and deleting items associated with an asset type.
uh, which you can find by navigating in the nav uh, navigation here to asset types and example scenarios or you can um, type in asset types up here in the search bar which will make it easy to find as well Thank you very much for watching this episode of Tech Bytes. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good value out of it. If you've got any questions, as always, please do feel free to get in touch with us uh, at Solutions PT via our website or via phone. Thank you.